Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with remoulade sauce. That's right, I promised I would show you this during the salmon cakes video, and I always keep my promises. At least, you know, sauce related promises. Plus, I've been wanting to show you how to do this for a while. So, without further ado, let's do this. And for step one, we're going to take some dry tarragon. And I'm going to take, I don't know, about a teaspoon or so. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that in a little saucepan. And as I'm doing that, I'm kind of rubbing it between my fingers to kind of break it up a little bit. Okay, it doesn't have to be too fine, but you do want to crush it up a little bit. And to that, we're going to add a couple tablespoons of white vinegar. You can use white wine vinegar. You could use white distilled vinegar. Either one's going to work here. In fact, any vinegar is going to work here, really. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place that on medium heat and bring it up to a simmer and just reduce it till the vinegar is almost gone. And what's going to happen? That dried tarragon is going to kind of hydrate. And that vinegar is going to reduce, which is going to increase its intensity. It's also being infused with that tarragon flavor. And as you well know, I love fresh tarragon. I use it all the time. But for this, I really think the dry gives us a deeper, more interesting flavor. And if you want, you can use both. But I'm going to recommend the dry here. So we're going to keep that on medium heat. We're going to keep reducing it. And be sure you keep an eye on this. There's only a couple tablespoons of liquid here that will burn very, very quickly. So when it gets to about this stage, I think we should turn off the heat. Because there's still enough residual heat in that pan, it's going to continue to evaporate that liquid. And when we're done with this step, it should look something like this. And at that point, we'll quickly transfer that to a mixing bowl to cool, which is only going to take a minute. And then approximately 60 seconds later, once that's cooled a little bit, we will add the rest of the ingredients, the first of which would be some mayonnaise, which makes up the majority of this condiment. So use the good stuff. In fact, people were asking me in the salmon cakes video what I meant by real mayonnaise. I mean real. Not egg-free, not fat-free, just regular good old-fashioned major brand mayonnaise. And you know I don't like to give specific brands, unless I'm compensated handsomely. But I will give you a hint and say it rhymes with smellsmans, okay? And once our mayo is in, it's on to the next and second most important ingredient, the finely diced up pickles. And for this, I'm going to use a combination of regular dill pickles and our deliciously sweet and sour bread and butter pickles. So for the dill pickle, I'm just going to cut it in thin slices and then cut it in little sticks and then turn it and give it a nice dice. And once you get it to that point, you can take the knife and continue dicing until it's as small as you want. And of course, that's up to you. You know, that whole you're the boss of your sauce thing. So you decide. And once my dill pickles have been chopped up, I'll move over to the bread and butter pickles and give those a good chopping. And as you'll notice, I'm also using some of the onions that were pickled along with the cucumbers. And by the way, depending on what I'm going to serve this with, sometimes I'll go all dill, sometimes I'll go all bread and butter, and quite often I'll do a combination, like we're doing here. So we'll chop those up, and once those are as finely minced as we want, we'll go ahead and add those to our mayonnaise, and continue on with the seasoning. And then next up, we need a little bit of anchovy. You can crush some fillets, or you can use this anchovy paste, which is super attractive going into the bowl. We're also going to want to put in some drained and chopped capers, along with some freshly chopped parsley, and a little bit of minced green onion, mostly the white parts. Of course, those are also referred to as scallions. In case you're one of these people that enjoys multiple words for the same thing. So a little bit of scallion. I'm also going to put in a little spoon of Dijon mustard. And we're also going to put in a little bit of paprika. Now, I don't believe that's in the authentic French version of this sauce, but they do add it to the remoulades in New Orleans. And it's been my experience. If they do it in New Orleans, we should probably do it. We'll also add a little shake of cayenne, so this is legit. And then last but not least, a pinch of freshly ground black pepper. And that's it. Let's go ahead and take a whisk and mix it up. So other than our little dry tarragon vinegar reduction, a very simple, very straightforward recipe. And then once we think that's well mixed, we're pretty much done. Except, of course, we're going to taste for seasoning. Now, because of the anchovies and the capers and the mayo, you may have enough seasoning here. But you do want to check. And at this point, it is technically ready to serve. Although I do think this is much better if you chill it overnight. But really up to you. If you have to serve it right away, go for it. But personally, I am going to refrigerate this overnight. And at that point, I'm ready to transfer it into my remoulade bowl. And then just to stay in shape, we'll garnish with a little more cayenne or paprika. Maybe a little bit of fresh chive or green onion on top. And that remoulade sauce, also known as tartar sauce, is done. And of course, it's fantastic on the usual suspects. Salmon cakes, crab cakes, shrimp, etc. But back in the old country where this was invented, it was originally intended as a sauce for meats. So don't be afraid to try this on a hamburger. It's unbelievably good. And you know how you're just so sick of turkey sandwiches you could scream? Instead of screaming, replace the regular mayonnaise with this. And no promises, but you might just fall in love with turkey sandwiches all over again. I mean, it is a French sauce after all, okay? 
So I really do hope you give this easy and delicious sauce a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.